<clears throat> Hi folks, I'm Kevin Smith, one of the pastors here at Hope Lutheran Church. Glad to be with you again today. I have uh, noticed over the years, over and over again, in these various national polls that come out, particularly from George Gallup, people are asked, uh, what is the greatest problem that you have in life? What is the greatest problem that you have in life? And two problems appear more than anything else. Number one, the problem of fear, just plain ordinary fear. And number two, worry, the problem of worry. I think both of those concerns are somewhat connected. And Jesus even challenges the crowds in his day 2,000 years ago with a similar question. Can any of you worry at a single day to your life? And then he reminds his listeners of God's good care. In Matthew 6, 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Jesus is reminding the listeners of his day, as he reminds us of the uselessness of worrying. Worrying is a weight, indeed, that no one needs. And yet I find myself day in and day out becoming anxious, filled at times with worry and concern. I love this note a mother wrote to comfort her son. During World War I, he was about ready to be shipped out to the front. And so she wrote out this little note, and then she tucked it in his pocket. And here's what she wrote. I love it. Of two things, one is certain. Either you are at the front or you're behind enemy lines. If you are at the front, two things are certain. Either you are exposed to, to the dangers or you are in a safe place. If you are exposed to danger of two things, one is certain. Either you are wounded or you are not wounded. If you are wounded of two things, one is certain. Either you will recover or you will die. If you recover, then there's no need to worry. And if you die, you can't worry. So why worry? <laughs> I don't know whether those words were comforting to that son before he shipped out or not. But worry is a weight that no one needs. And that struggle that we all face, and I face in my life, to win over worry is, is, is a battle that has to be fought every single day. Priscilla is so good with me. When she senses I'm filled with anxiety or worry or concern, we'll talk about it. And at the end of the conversation, she'll say to me, Kevin, you need to listen to your own sermons. You need to listen to your own sermons. So number one, I just want to stress in that battle over worry and winning over worry is focus on faith. You've got to keep that focus on our faith. George Mueller puts it this way. He said, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of faith is the end of anxiety. Because worry always causes us to look at ourselves, but faith causes us to look at God. Worry will always make you look within, and then you become discontented. Worry will make us look around, and then you become distracted. And worry will make you look at others, then you become discouraged. But faith will make you look to God. That's the voice of deliverance that can help us give the right perspective so that we can focus on faith, not on worry. Think about it this way. Worry is simply creating mental pictures in your head about what you do not want to have happen. And faith, though, is creating mental pictures in your head of what you do want to have happen. That's the crucial difference. That's the crucial difference. Focus on faith. Focus on faith, not worry. And then secondly, focus on God's word. Focus on God's word. Do your best today and then focus on tomorrow with what you have learned today. Dr. Peter Marshall, wonderful Presbyterian Scottish pastor who uh, served as a chaplain for some years in the United States Senate back in the 1950s. He prayed this prayer one morning in the United States Senate. He said, Lord, 
Help us to do our very best this day and be content with today's troubles so that we shall not borrow the troubles of tomorrow. Save us from the sin of worry, lest stomach ulcers become the badge of our lack of faith. Amen. What a powerful prayer. What a powerful prayer. Focus and feed on God's word when worry strikes. When worry strikes. Someone, somebody once said, and put it so well, I love it. They said, worry is as wicked as swearing. But swearing is taking God's name in vain. Worry is taking God's promises in vain. And think about this. There are a promise each and every day of the year that you can call on. So be in God's word. Claim those promises for your day when you are filled with anxiety or uncertainty. And then as you do, you can turn everything over to God. He will help you win over worry. Mary Crowley put it so well when she said, every evening I turn my worries over to God. Why? Because he's going to be up all night anyway. <laughs> what a wonderful perspective. All our worries, says Oswald Chambers, is caused by calculating without God. When you calculate without God, you get a wrong focus on life. You get a wrong focus on the stuff of life, the things of life. And then you get a wrong focus on yourself. No, indeed, these important three observations. God is concerned about me. God is concerned about everything that happens to me. And God wants my worries now. Focus on faith. And then as you do, you will focus and zero in on God's word, the promises that are there for you. Think about it this way. Every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of anxiety or anxiety or and, and worry or the handle of faith. The choice is always yours. Take hold of it with the handle of faith. Focus on faith. Focus on God's word and let that promise sustain you and keep you and know that you are in good hands. You're a good shepherd. He's on your side and he's walking right with you. Thank you. God bless. And remember, God loves you and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. See you next time. Bye-bye.